Did you know that there is no guaranteed salvation? Did you know that there is no guaranteed salvation in Christianity? The Sacred Secret of Jesus' Last Speech The Sacred Secret of Jesus' Last Speech If you ask any Muslim today, do you love Jesus, the answers will be very revealing as all the answers will be about how Muslims honor Jesus deeply and see in him God's miracles. From the moment of Jesus' birth till God raised him to heavens and until his coming back to earth before the day of judgment. Thus, Jesus has a vital and unique role to play in the Muslim faith. However, Muslims believe that Jesus was not crucified and that Jesus was spared death because he was God's holy word. Muslims also believe that Jesus' enemies could not triumph over him because he is God's chosen servant. Surprisingly, this actually was what Jesus said himself in the Christian Bibles through his speeches. In this article we will answer some essential questions. Did Jesus' enemies really kill him and crucify him? Where did the Christ go? Did the Christ ascend to heaven? Did the Christ ascend to hell? So let's start. The prophecies of the Christ that he will be saved from killing. According to what has come in the famous book, the Christ is seen in the sources of the Christian beliefs. In this part, we will mention some prophecies of the Christ which assert his safety and deliverance from the plot of his enemies. They are simple prophecies, needing no commentary. The Pharisees heard the crowd thus muttering about him, and the chief priests and the Pharisees sent officers to arrest him. Jesus then said, I will be with you a little longer, and then I am going to him who sent me. You will seek me and you will not find me. Where I am you cannot come. This saying is clear that the Jews will seek him for killing, but they will fail to do so because he will go to a place where they cannot follow him. He will go up to heaven, in a manner similar to that of Elijah. The Jews thought that he was speaking of a special place, but they could not realize the truth. The Jews said to one another, Where does this man intend to go that we will not find him? Does he intend to go to the dispersion among the Greeks and teach the Greeks? What does he mean by saying, You will seek me and you will not find me, and, where I am you cannot come? John 7 verses 33-36 In a succeeding challenging situation between the Jews and the Christ. So he said to them again, I am going away, and you will seek me, and you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, Will he kill himself, since he says, Where I am going, you cannot come. Jesus said to them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak just as the Father taught me. And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. John 8 verses 21-29 The last words of the Christ were, The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, each one to his home, and you will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16 verses 32-33 we know that the man on the cross was overcome by his evil enemies. Therefore, he should be some man other than the Christ, who asserts that he has overcome the whole world. And in the last controversy with the Jews, the Christ challenged them saying, I tell you, you will not see me again, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. MT 2339 The challenge is big and clear here. The Jewish priesthood will not see the Christ again. Till his second coming, with power and great glory. But that crucified man was once again seen by and in the hands of the chief priests and elders captive during the trials, victim of mockery. Scourging, crucifixion, and finally a dead body. Truly, what the Christ has prophesied of his safety is a confirmation of what the Psalms had previously predicted, as we have seen before. Where did the Christ go? Christian sources disagreed about the place where the Christ is said to have gone after the crucifixion attempt, as well as the timing of his going to the supposed places. Some said that after the resurrection he has ascended to heaven, others said that he descended first to hell, before his ascension. Did the Christ ascend to heaven? Now, according to Luke, ascension to heaven took place on the very day of the crucifixion, but according to John, it was some days after the crucifixion. But Luke, in fact, has changed the date of ascension, which he had said to be on the day of the crucifixion into a later date. Luke said in Acts, that ascension took place no less than 40 days after the crucifixion. Adolf Harnack says. According to the Valentinians and Ophites, Christ ascended into heavens 18 months after resurrection, according to Pistis Sophia 11 years after resurrection. Did the Christ descend to hell? In the Apostles' Creed, there is a statement about Jesus descending into hell. Did he really go there? Each Sunday, millions of Christians around the world recite the Apostles' Creed, including that statement. I believe that Jesus descended into hell. According to this so-called creed, Christ descended into hell before resurrection. The writer of John's Gospel also made all prophets before the Christ, thieves and robbers. 10 7. 
How is that? How can he attribute to the Christ such sayings? How could it be said that the prophets go to hell while the Christ has clearly shown, as Luke recorded, that good believers, who are inferior to prophets, go after death directly to paradise? While wicked go to hell. No doubt that such sayings and beliefs like the Christ descended to hell to deliver the former prophets and saints is a proof of the demonic ability of some human beings who considered themselves Christians to fabricate such myths. It must now be quite clear that the stories of the Christ's resurrection, appearance, descending to hell, are all narratives of doubtful origin, diffused in suspicious circumstances. Indeed, God Almighty said in the Quran. And, for, they're saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Messenger of Allah. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. But, another, was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who differ over it are in doubt about it. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption. And they did not kill him, for certain. Rather, Allah raised him to himself. And ever is Allah exalted in might and wise. I curse them because they proudly, but falsely, said, We killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. They did not kill him as they claimed, nor did they crucify him, but they killed and crucified a man whom Allah made to resemble Jesus, so they thought the person who was killed was Jesus. Those Jews who claim to have killed him and those Christians who surrendered him over to them are in doubt and confusion regarding the matter. They have no knowledge, but make guesses that are of no worth against the truth. Truly, they did not kill Jesus nor crucify him. Instead, Allah saved Jesus from their plot and raised him in body and spirit to himself. Allah is mighty in his dominion and nothing can overpower him. He is wise in his planning, decisions, and laws. Anisa 157-158 did you know that there is no guaranteed salvation in Christianity? The title of this article may shock a lot of people, because if there is anything that all Christians assert, it is that they shall have salvation. But the problem is that most Christians don't think much about their own creed, what it means and what follows from it. There are a lot of consequences of what they say and claim without second thought like that. In this article I will explore one simple consequence of the Christian creed and see where it leads. Creed that I am talking about To make things clear, I will state what exactly I am referring to, Christians believe that their salvation is received by God himself becoming a man and dying on the cross to rid humanity of its sin. This creed has so much irrationality in it. Actually, what I will be focusing on the part where they say that, God became man. Where is the problem? In Numbers 23 19 it says, God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should repent. New King James Version, Numbers 23. This verse is really problematic because it states clearly that God is not a man or a son of man. It clearly denies that. It also, portrays it as something lowly and unfit of God, among the other attributes mentioned in the verse that follows being a man, and are all clearly denied in the verse. So when a Christian says he believes in the Bible which contains this, while also saying he believes that Jesus, Themen the Son of Man, is God. There is a clear contradiction here between the dogma and the scripture. And I think the majority of Christians just ignore this text and just look the other way when they are reading it, if they do read it because of how it directly conflicts with their core belief. But there are other Christians who might not see a problem here at all, saying, God wasn't a man, and then he became a man, no contradiction here. This reply is actually what represents the Christian belief accurately, but from that exact reply comes a much bigger problem. How can it be that there is no guaranteed salvation in Christianity? It all comes from that core part of the Christian creed that God may change. It is perfectly acceptable by the Christian creed that God may change. Shockingly, not just that, but he may change to something lowly and unfit of him, something that he clearly denied before. And that is exactly why there could never be any guaranteed salvation in Christianity. Because the one absolute, the one and only, that we, any human could rely on to guarantee any and everything, according to Christians may change. Think about it, when they say, God is merciful, God is just, God has wisdom, God is love, God is truthful, it all becomes meaningless once you add to it, God may change, doesn't it? Back to the scripture. To make the point more clear, let's go back to the verse mentioned above. It makes the clear connection between, God is not a man, and, God doesn't lie. So the simplest question that I am asking to any Christian is that if God changed and became a man, how can you ever say that he wouldn't change and go back on his promise? Christians promise people in the name of God that they shall receive salvation if they believed in the Christian narrative. But even if we said that this was actually a promise from God, how could any Christian trust in it when he himself believes that, God may change? And that is why I say, Christians may promise salvation but they could never guarantee salvation. They can't even guarantee that when they go to sleep that they will wake up in this life. They might wake up finding that all this life ended and everyone is arbitrarily thrown into hell without even being judged. Why? Because as they mindlessly say, God may change to something low and unfit of him. 
the consequences of a false belief. As I said in the beginning, you will rarely see a Christian talking about this matter at all. In fact, they don't really think of the consequences of the words that come out of their mouths. If they do think and start to see all the horrible consequences that is based on what they are saying they are confronted by two choices. Either ignore it and just keep blindly believing and suppress the thoughts. Or recognizing the fault in what they are saying and admit that what they say is a horrible thing indeed. How can they claim that God is a man without thinking like that? Aren't they afraid of what the one they are speaking mindlessly on his behalf will do to them on the day of judgment? The day when they'll stand before him to face the consequences of the words they throw without a second thought. Only then, Christians will discover that there is no guaranteed salvation. Their creed leads them into doubting God himself, the one absolute, the only refuge, the only one we could have as an anchor to be certain of anything. Doesn't it make sense? I wish that the Christians reading this will revise themselves. Please, think deeply of what you are saying about God before you stand before him and be judged on it. And I end my article by repeating the verse from Numbers 23 19, God is not a man that he should lie nor a son of man that he should repent. And following it with this verse Malachi 3 verse 6, For I am the Lord, I do not change. New King James Version, Malachi 3. To conclude, God doesn't change, God doesn't become something that is lowly and unfit of him. God is neither a man nor son of man. He is not Jesus, God is the greater. Let's talk live now to know more about your creator.